I heard blink, blink. <laughs> Are you rolling? Yep, that's when I hit record. Oh. Still... <laughs> yeah. Well, good. Yeah, good. We're going. Yeah. <clears throat> so we, we get ready to roll. Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Necro. Brought to you by Public Safety and Education and the Trigger Pressers Union. Meet the Pressers is brought to you by Mantis X. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Next level training. Makers of CERT training products. Saber Red. Saber Red has been making men and women cry since 1975. Meet the Pressers is also brought to you by these fine companies, shows, and organizations. Thank you. Hey everybody, this is Matt Mallory with Meet the Pressers and... I'm Clint Macro. <laughs> <laughs> the safe place to talk about political activism, faith, pressing triggers, gear, gadgets, and all the fun stuff that comes with it. We got an awesome guest. Want to introduce him? Yes, this is Mike Ox, and he's our, our roommate here at the SHOT Show Bungalow of Education. Uh, there's a whole bunch of us got together in this, this B&B. And uh, we're having a, we just had dinner, we're having a late night conversation talking about your book, Red Dot Mastery. I've heard it's good. Yeah, yeah, Mike, you know, you've been on the show before and, and a lot of people know you, I know you, but could you just give us like the elevator speech on your background and then we'll get a little bit more into the book. Yeah, um, so the big reason I'm doing what I'm doing now is because about 10 years ago, I had the consequence of way too many concussions catch up with me. And so my eyes weren't tracking correctly, uh, had vertigo almost every night for just over three years, and hand-eye coordination was off and had lots of issues going on. And had to figure out whether that was my new normal or whether there was a way out of it. And so went down to Phoenix and met with some neurology coaches and the six months prior, I hadn't been able to do a push-up without a lot of pain. He did about 20 minutes of vision drills with me, wow. and I did 20 push-ups without pain. And it didn't make any sense to me whatsoever, because vision drills shouldn't do that to mm. a shoulder. Mm. So I went back home, and I noticed I was shooting better, and started trying the drills with, with other shooters, and got kind of crazy results. And so that lit a fire and for the, the last nine years, I've, um, I've trained with Wharton, Wharton Neurology, uh, Z Health Education, Next Level Neuro, Sports Vision Pros, uh, several different uh, neurology and vision training organizations. That's awesome. Would you say that it's kind of like, when you were saying that it made me think of like acupuncture, where there's certain Parts of the body that are connected to other parts, and acupuncture can help help release some of those toxins and energies and such. Is that kind of that same concept, where the, the eyes are connected to other parts of the body that help them work correctly? Oh, uh, without getting too deep into it, it has to do with how the brain uses and gets glucose and oxygen, and so that feeds up from the brain stem to the back of the brain and then forward. And if things aren't working correctly in the brain stem, then that oxygen and glucose gets used up trying to deconflict the signals from your senses. Hmm. And there's not enough by the time it gets to your prefrontal cortex for inhibition of saying and doing things you don't want to do. Uh, being a <laughs> I could idiot. use help with that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all could. <laughs> um, afternoon brain fog, hmm. uh, all sorts of different things. Wow. So you're exercising your brain, or at least you're opening up those those pathways for that to get to your brain so your brain can function better. Yeah, it, it, as the designed. more efficient you can make the brain, yeah. uh, the more efficient, or one part of the brain, the more energy there is for every other part of the brain. That's awesome, that's, that's fascinating. It's fascinating. amazing, it's really crazy. Do you have to have a degree to read this? No. Because <laughs> talking to Mike, sometimes I feel like, 
because <laughs> <laughs> you're just so smart. So it's that's that's what I love about you. I'm always learning something, talking to you, and it's fascinating to hear just your your thought process and things and how to to drill down and and you know, demystify problems. And it's necess, necessity breeds invention, right? That yeah. Thought process. Oh, I mean, that's absolutely. How you did, it, got into this. It, everything came from pain. Well, in some so. sense, <laughs> some sense that's not good, but it's good. No, that you, you got away. The from end the pain. result was good. Yeah. Amen. But, hmm. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. So it, at what point in time did you realize that you needed to put all this down on paper and start? Because you were, you were an instructor before? I have been for about a decade, well, over a decade. Yeah. But, but even before when you had the, the issue with your... Yes. Yeah, okay. So when, when you, obviously you immersed yourself in this because this just wasn't like your doctor told you this and that's kind of where you, you studied with all those different places. Oh yeah, like last year I did over 150 hours of live neurology training. Yeah, that's, that's pretty incredible. So at what point, point in time did you decide to like, you wanted to write the books and? That came about because of a few big problems that I saw. Uh, number one, when I wanted to switch to a red dot, mm -hmm. I just kept hearing horror stories about it taking weeks and months and people not being able to find the dot. And so I reverse engineered it and was like, all right, how could I do this in a single rep? How can I go from irons to a red dot? Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, well, if the presentation is the same and I can deliver the sites automatically and the dot is co-witnessed with my factory sites, mm -hmm. then the dot should appear. And that's what we all tell ourselves right. and then, <laughs> then we don't see it. We go well, searching the, for it. Yeah, the, the issue is that most people, the way that they aim is they get the gun up into their field of vision and, search for it. and then they aim with their eyes. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is aim with your presentation so that the, the sights are directly aligned between your dominant eye and your intended target. Hmm. And then it gets into an issue uh, we've got four different types of eye dominance. So we've got right eye dominant, left eye dominant, we've got cyclopean dominant, which 11% of the population, their visual cortex combines the images from the two eyes and creates a hybrid third image that doesn't exist in reality and you try and aim with it. Hmm. And so people who have that, that 11%, they've got to shut an eye hmm. or they have dominant switch back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I remember talking about that last time we had you on the show, and that was that was fascinating in itself. Just talking about the you know how the you know eye dominance because most people think it's either your right eye dominant, left right handed, left eye dominant, left handed, or yeah. you know mix yeah, mix of see, the two. I've always you know like for instance the NRA curriculum it was like you got to establish eye dominance yeah. like number one must always, yeah. and I always kind of thought of that as a little bit of a, a misnomer because. I certainly have experienced where people have claimed their eye dominance shift with different lighting, mm -hmm. with fatigue. I, I know me personally, if I drink wine, <laughs> I'm left eye all day long, but I drink some wine, I'm right eye dominant. And I've pretty much gotten shit faced a few times and tried, you know, tried the dominance exercise and have documented that it, it shifted. And I know we can train our eyes to be different dominance. I mean, mm, you know, in, in coaching school, that was always something that we talked about it. It's a long process. Uh, so the eye dominance thing for me was always kind of like, uh, I wasn't so into the fact that it might be like a, a hard yes or no kind of, kind of, you know, or through you're injury always, like, or age that could change or even with stigmatisms, all that could affect eye dominance. But I, I think where I'm going with that is you, you're saying that you can, you can change that. You can affect that by. So yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, Changing it from right to left or left to right, that's something that the brain has a preference for one eye over the other in a particular context. Mm -hmm. And you can spend a lot of time trying to change the wiring of the brain, but you're gonna be better off working with it. Mm -hmm. And because the, the brain's preference for one eye, it can be because one optic nerve is one neuron shorter than the other. Wow. And, it, and one eye, the image gets processed 15 milliseconds faster than the other. Okay. And that's typically why we tell somebody if they're left eye dominant but right handed that learn how to shoot left handed. And Either that or mantra, um, usually. Move to the midline. 
Yeah. Well, especially if, I mean, if you're shooting isosceles, but yeah. if you're well, doing was... a rifle or a shotgun, oh, usually yeah, it would yeah. be, you have to switch the, the, the hand that's congruent with the eye, the dominant eye, Yeah, would be the more. Unless somebody like I, my NRA training counselor, when I got certified ages ago, he was right-handed but left-eye dominant, but he shot that, right, he shot that way forever, and he'd do this with his rifle. Well, <laughs> he'd no, bring I his would, head up over I just would use my non-dominant eye, and yeah. it worked, you know, I... I can hit what I'm shooting at with a bolt gun for sure, but uh, is it as efficient or is it more or less efficient? You could have that discussion too. But re retrain it if you're good at it and it works. Why reinvent the wheel or why go back? Unless somebody really wants to get better, yeah. you know, trying to find the flaw and say, okay, I really want to get better because I'm going to do competition. And if I do it the, the better way, then I can get that edge that I'm, I'm looking for. Other than yeah. that, it's well, like... With, with the both eyes open, shooting like strong side, but you have an opposite eye, dominant eye, if you're shooting a long gun where it's mounted to your face, yeah, it's absolutely... That's a problem you have to fix. You know, so you're either going to use your non-dominant eye or, or learn to shoot left-handed or whatever the case may be. Yeah. But, you know, with, with more of a, like a center index kind of presentation, yeah. like an isosceles or something. Or athletic I never stance. thought it really mattered that much in the context of the bedroom distance or nine to 15 feet kind of shooting because. So yeah, that's a good point. If, if you're in a compressed time frame, mm -hmm. and let's just for argument's sake, say that with the first shot, you're not gonna use your sights. If you hit, no problem. Mm -hmm. If you miss, how do you correct? And that's when it becomes an issue. Mm. Under stress. What's that? Under stress, with the stress aspect yeah. of it. Hmm, interesting. But the the more consistent you can be with your presentation, the more consistently you can deliver it between A and I and the target, the more likely it's going to come up between that I and the target under stress. Well, I definitely agree with anything that you can perform consistently is going to help with performance. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> provided it's, we don't want to consistently present the gun in a poor fashion. Correct. <laughs> well, but you'll yeah. just do that better under stress. You'll yeah. present it poorly <laughs> better. under stress, yeah. So um, I'd like to get your opinion on this. With, with a lot of the students that I have that, that'll do Red Dot in the 18-hour class in New York State, I'm finding that the majority of them that have issues finding it usually have it where the front of the muzzle's too high. They're healing, you know, healing if, it. If, if, if the class was 19 hours, I think you could fix that Maybe. problem. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I always find that I just take the front of the gun and I just tilt it down a little. Can you see it now? And they're like, yep. But it's, it's usually 99% of them, it's, they're just that muzzle. That's the most common. Is it yeah. the most common? Okay. Yeah, that's, I've noticed that. Yeah, so the other thing that, that you can see, or if you... Um, either have people aim a blue gun at you mm -hmm. or have them aim into a camera okay. with whatever platform is appropriate. You'll see people come up and present the gun between their nose or the corner of their eye and the target mm -hmm. and then shift it over at the, at the last second. Hmm. And you, that- You mentioned that last time you were on the show and I started, you said that and I was like, hmm. And I started paying attention to that. And I, I, it wasn't a wide cross-section of students, but I think I had uh, like three or four, and I'm, I'm like really paying attention to that. I think you're absolutely right on that. Oh, I've yeah. got, yeah. I've got <laughs> oh, he's tons like, no, of video. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got tons of video on it. Yeah, thanks so, for telling me. But yeah, I, I, I had never noticed that. So that's, yeah. a, that's a cool thing. Um, what's happening is the brain has a, an aiming source. So the, the origin of aiming, and it's called an ego center. And it can be, it can line up with an eye, it can line up with the, the middle of the nose. And when we think about, I wanna line up something between me and a target, we're actually lining it up between the ego center and the target. And so if our ego center is matched up with our dominant eye, we present the gun between our dominant eye and the target. If our ego center is with the nose or corner of the eye, we present the gun between our nose or corner of the eye and the target. And we can move the ego center in about five minutes and stabilize eye dominance to an eye. Hmm. So it's kind of like being on alignment. So you, instead of going to a chiropractor, you go to Mike Cox. <laughs> <laughs> and he fixes your ego center. Yeah. yeah. Move it. Move it. Yeah. Move it. Okay. Adjusts it. Realigns it. 
<laughs> I like it. I like it. So uh, as far as uh, I think Clint was hinting at it, as far as the, the time frame, putting this together, how, how much of a life's work is it? How, when did you start pulling all the notes together and, put, and from start of, yes, we're going to do a book to the time you published it? So the, a lot of it is the, it's called sensory integration. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to get the eyes working together. I want to get the eyes and the inner ear working together mm -hmm. and uh, proprioception, body awareness, hand-eye coordination, all of those in agreement on what straight ahead is. And that's something I've been working on for nine years because it was a, a big, big problem for me. Uh, I had uh, IDPA indoor nationals where I had to do sensory integration drills between stages mm -hmm. in order to basically be safe walking and shooting because uh, I was just in, I was in really bad shape then. And so it's been a passion for uh, about a decade. Okay. And I've taught it in one form or another with iron sights, with um, aerial gunnery, with carbines, with long range precision. But with red dots, your margin of error is so much smaller that it matters a lot more. Hmm. And it allows somebody to be able to automatically present the gun or automatically present the dot between their dominant eye and the target way, way faster than e and easier than brute force repetition. Nice. It's interesting when you say that, it makes me think of like, you know how we get used to driving a car and you're driving and you're like, yeah, I can make it through there. And you know, because you know the mm -hmm. vehicle, you're comfortable with it, you know your, your capabilities and you're going to make it between those two vehicles and the spouse in the passenger seat doesn't think you're going to do it and thinks you're going to crash. And if they were in the driver's seat, you definitely would crash because yeah. they're not as good as you are doing that, right? That kind of thing, right? You're honing that in. You get used to the, the tool in your hands, the vehicle or the gun with the red dot. Yeah, that's interesting. And getting comfortable with it, knowing your limitations and zeroing in on it. Yeah, it just came to me as you were talking about that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're a little pungy. It's been a long day. <laughs> <Shot show today. laughs> yes, yes. Long day. Yes. So coming down the escalator tonight, I saw you doing a thumbs up, and I, I thought you were thumb giving somebody a thumbs up, and I'm uh -huh. like, who's he? Th and I'm looking, and I and then I realized you were doing a uh, uh, some sort of exercise, weren't you? Yeah. What was Those. it? So that's um, basically integrating the visual system, the vestibular system, or the inner inner ear, and hand-eye coordination. And so the one form of it is no, no. Yes, yes, and ear to shoulder, and it gets all three axes and gets things synced up. And so it's, it's important after, um, well, with, the, with SHOT Show, I'm hard of hearing, and in an environment where there's a ton of noise in every direction, yep. it's stressful on sensory processing. Mm. And so I do that a few times throughout the day. Uh, for most people, it, anytime you travel in a vehicle or an airplane faster than 20 miles an hour, mm. uh, there's some form of sensory mismatch that happens. If you're young and healthy, you recover almost immediately. You don't even notice it. Hmm. Uh, if you've taken too many hits to the head or other factors, uh, it, can, it can cause issues. The most common issues, uh, sore neck, sore back of the head, mm. and sore back and people blame it on the flight, people blame it on the bed that they're sleeping in when they're, on, yeah. when they're traveling, but a lot of times it's sensory mismatch. And the, the reason I make that claim is because when people start doing the silly no, no, yes, yes, ear to shoulder, or uh, other versions of it that I teach, they don't get that anymore when they travel. Hmm. It really is like neurological chiropractic. I wouldn't make that claim because I don't know if that's... Well, as I understand. There might be a licensing. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that's our speculation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there's things like uh, there's the uh, vestibulospinal reflex. And so if our vestibular system knows what straight ahead is, knows which way gravity's of, uh, having an impact on us, it lines up the spine correctly. If it's messed up, your spine might curve trying to adjust for what your vestibular system is telling your brain. No, and it's a reflex. Total. It's not uh, It's not something you think about. You get the vestibular system working, sometimes the spine will straighten out. Wow. Hmm. That's fascinating. 
For it, sure. It's absolutely, we're amazingly made. And it's, it's, the more I dig into it, the more amazing it is. Yeah, well, you're amazing. And stuff like this, definitely Red Dot Mastery, uh, you know, get it. And this is what, your 15th book? <laughs> sixth. I knew it was a lot. So sixth book. So what, and what are the names of some of the other ones and, and how can people uh, uh, purchase the books, learn more about you? What's the best way? Well, oh, Red Dot Mastery at reddotmastery.com. Uh, Real World Gunfight Training at realworldgunfighttraining.com. Uh, Tactical Firearms Training Secrets, same thing. And so... And all of them are, are on mikeox.com, right? No, I don't know we need to get if you that, that exists. We need to get you that to me. <laughs> Not MikeOx.com. <laughs> Red.Mastery.com. RealWorldGunfighting.com. Good. Awesome. Well, it's always awesome to hang out Thank with you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Glean Real knowledge. Pleasure. Thanks for coming on. Great being in Mies. That's true. And Second year in a row. Thanks again. Let's do it again next year. Yeah, so this is Matt and Clint and Mike signing off from the SHOT Show Bungalow of Education. <laughs> Good night. Hello, my name is Clint Macro. I'm the administrator of National Train-A-Teacher Day. National Train-A-Teacher Day is a grassroots movement of firearms instructors, safety instructors, defensive instructors, and first aid instructors who are offering free training to teachers, school staff, administrators, and anybody that works with youth in a leadership capacity. We offer this training on what we call National Train-A-Teacher Day. This year is our seventh National Train of Teacher Day, and we're observing it on June 22nd. That's Saturday, June 22nd, 2024. On this day, teachers, school staff, administrators, and anyone that work with youth in a leadership capacity can take advantage of this training at absolutely zero cost. Visit the National Train of Teacher Day website. That's nationaltrainateacherday.com, and you can find an instructor in your area who is offering training. If you're a firearms instructor, safety instructor, first aid instructor, or something like that, and you would like to offer your services for National Train and Teacher Day, if you visit the website and look under the volunteer page, you can find ways to volunteer your services for that day. I'd like to thank the United States Concealed Carry Association and Sabre Pepper Spray, both of which have been sponsors for many years, are continuing with their sponsorship. And what that means is any instructor that's teaching one of their classes from their curriculum that's certified to teach it uh, is eligible to get free training supplies from the parent organizations, and that helps to defer costs. Again, this training is for free for teachers, school staff, administrators, and anybody that works with youth in a leadership capacity. So I look forward to uh, seeing you guys in classes. Uh, spread the word. Uh, this is a grassroots movement, so we can use your help in getting the word out there to those end users. For more information, visit nationaltrainateacherday.com. Remember, this year is the seventh year we're doing this, and it's on June 22nd, 2024. Thank you very much. We are Meet the Pressers. I'm Matt Mallory. And I'm Clint Macro. Meet the Pressers is a safe place for trigger pressers to congregate and talk about all kinds of different things that are firearms related, defensive training, guns, gear, gadgets, political activism, and politics. Make sure to check us out on all the social media platforms, on television, Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV, all the audio platforms, as well as all of the other YouTube, gun streamer, et cetera. <laughs> Watching Meet the Pressers.